Well, let's join our uh, Rebecca Sun from The Hollywood Reporter again for a closer look at the global movie industry. Thanks for coming back for us, Rebecca. Sure thing. When Great Wall production, or started production, I should say, box office sales were surging more than, I believe, 35% a year. Now, years later, ticket sales have dropped for three months straight. So what's the issue? Are movies getting worse, audiences getting pickier, or both? Yeah, I think uh, you make really good points. I think there's been such a glut of product in China that um, the audiences have gotten more discerning and they have, uh, you know, there's a little bit of f consumer fatigue, you know, once you have all of these pro uh, movies coming out. And if they're not very good, that will decrease people's enthusiasm uh, to go buy a ticket for the next movie. And so I think that, you know, sustaining that uh, glut of product certainly has impacted the box office growth. So what do producers have to do to boost sales at the Chinese box office? I mean, you talk about the, the way to, the Great Wall is playing. Is that something to build on for the future? Is this, are there lessons to learn there? Yeah, you know, I attended the annual U.S.-China Film Summit uh, here in Los Angeles in November. And across the board, uh, Chinese and American film executives were talking about the need to go back to the basics. They really need to find quality stories. They need to find quality screenwriters, filmmakers, who can figure out how to make the types of stories that Chinese audiences want to see. You know, it's not, it's no longer just about throwing anything on the screen and figuring that uh, there are enough Chinese people to, to go out and see it. They really need to kind of uh, work on that filmmaking process and, and boost the quality to meet the incredible demand, because the demand absolutely is still there. The audience is still there. Now, the global film industry does show healthy projections for the coming years as the global box office revenue is forecast to increase, I believe, about $38 billion in 2016 to nearly $50 billion in 2020. What's the difference, though, between the U.S. and China, and how do you program for, for what are pretty different audiences? Right. Well, one of the biggest differences is the fact that uh, in China, you are still seeing rapid theater growth in the sense that, um, you know, there are new movie theaters popping up every day. They're, they're going to, you know, fourth tier cities for the first time. And so there's still just a lot of f literal physical terrain in China where um, people are getting movie theaters in their towns for the first time. They're starting to, you know, build that movie going culture. And so there is a lot of untapped potential. And so the question is, culturally, how do you um, bring in those audiences who may, may not have been as weaned on Hollywood product, you know, coming up with original Chinese stories, uh, content that really speaks to them, that speaks to their lives now. You know, it's really about capturing, uh, you know, those audiences that don't necessarily only live in Beijing or Shanghai or places like that. You know, we've seen so much success in the United States with series and with sequels. That, that accounts for a lot of the most popular movies of the year. Is that a formula for the Chinese audience as well? You know, it could be. Certainly, Chinese audiences have been receptive both to Hollywood sequels. I mean, I think the last Fast and the Furious movie, the sixth edition, is uh, one of the highest grossing uh, movies in China of all time, as well as, you know, China is no stranger to having its own sequels. Franchises are popular because they are familiar. You know, when it comes to importing a Hollywood movie, though, you have to sort of make sure that that original franchise is something that the Chinese audience is at least somewhat familiar familiar with, or if not, it's that it's something that they can easily catch up to. Rebecca Sun, live for us in L.A. from The Hollywood Reporter, or thanks to you.